Hi dears, welcome back to the channel Benny Dumbai Anna. It's me Anna with you here. We are on a loveliest beach of Levante today early in the morning to let you know the latest update on the situation here in Spain, all the newest restrictions and the ease of measures that we've all been waiting for so so much in our area and of course latest news from our lovely town of Benidorm. Let's so the first thing that I've noticed when I came to the beach today is that the sand it's actually cold. The sand is very cold in the uh, shade so it's slightly uncomfortable to, to even sit down on it. Very strange thing. I was not used to it, was not ready for it, but during the day where the, where the sunlight will be, it's going to be okay. You don't need to worry about it. So let's start with the situation first, probably. The situation is still getting better here in Spain. The cases are decreasing. The, the overall pressure on the hospitals, ICU units um, in general and first like uh, medicine, like first consultations, doctors, family doctors is decreasing as well. Even so that here in Spain, they've basically canceled all the phone consultations, like obligatory phone consultations. So when you used to call to the doctor before, what they were saying is that to get an appointment, I mean, what they were saying is, uh, no, you cannot come here unless it's strictly, strictly necessary to check you out. Uh, the doctor will call you and will let you know what to do. And if you need to come or not, he will decide or she. Uh, but right now all the appointments are presential unless the person says that no i don't want to go please call me but then he'll, he or she will need to wait a little bit because the doctor is occupied with the patients at physical appointments the amount of cases is almost almost less than 2000 probably in a few days we will hit less than 2000 cases every 24 hours right now it's 2290 new cases for the last day and the index is still continuing to drop and today it is 62 cases per every 100,000 people it's a very small number if you put it in a percentage rate and in general it's a small number we are this this close to have a low risk here in Spain in general. Our Valencian region, by the way, is already in a low risk. We have, I think, 48 or more or less. Uh, the index is here 48. So we are already in a low risk situation, not in, in the new normality um, according to numbers, but we are in a new normality according to the restrictions that we have right now. And I know that on Monday, a lot of you guys watched the video, but I'm not sure how many of you checked the community tab that we have here, which are posts that I do here on the channel for you guys to see some extra and up-to-date information. So I did one on Monday, but just in case you have not seen that one, I will tell you all the latest changes in terms of restrictions and what's happening in Valencian region, what you can or cannot do. So starting from yesterday night already everything is um approved and you can do it so all the bars and restaurants don't have a closure hour uh, dictated by the government they um have to close down as for the time that they have in their license so the license that they have approved for this establishment is the one that they need to follow no more restrictions for bars and restaurants in terms of opening hours they do have the capacity which inside can be 75 percent and on the outside is a hundred percent capacity like occupancy i mean uh, what is with the nightlife? The nightlife is also open. It's continuing to be open, but they've um, put the hours slightly more. So right now the nightclubs, night pubs, etc. are able to open up until 5 a.m. in the morning, which is one and a half hours more than they used to. So it's good news for all the business owners in nightlife here in Benidorm and in general in Valencian community. And the other thing is that the dance floors are finally open. 
this is especially i'm not like i used to like to go to dance but when you have a family when my life has changed so much so not anymore but i know um a lot of you would like to go and have a nice dance every now and then especially when you are on holidays here so yes it is available once again on the dance floor you have to wear a mask there are security staff also checking and the managers the owners of the nightclubs are actually there present to check that all the restrictions and norms measures are being strictly followed because they do not want to close back again uh, so it's open up until five and with a dance floor you can also go to the bar to ask for a drink before you could not do so you had to wait on the table when the waiter comes and ask for a cocktail a drink whatever you wish but right now you can actually get to the bar to ask for your favorite drinks so it's amazing news and for those of you who love to sing and who are looking for karaoke bars here in Benidorm another amazing news karaoke bars are open back again even any kind of pub uh, the one that we've seen for example in the old town the one that we went inside to ask if the karaoke was available that one also has karaoke starting from now on so all of you who love to sing and who love to have a nice time in these type of bars you will be able to do so during your holidays the rest of the restrictions basically we don't have any more left apart from the mask social distancing uh hand sanitizing every time you go to any kind of um interior like place uh these restrictions for the bars restaurants and discos and that's it to go to the shopping centers um supermarkets pharmacies uh, i don't know like cinemas theaters museums there is no occupancy uh, like specific occupancy it's 100 percent so they do not uh, calculate the amount of people that is getting inside starting from now on so this is why i'm saying that basically we've hit already the new normality basically we are already in it because even though the numbers are still not as low as we would love to have them but uh still as for restrictions we are living our normal genuine lives the ones that we were waiting to rec to recover and have them back again for such a long time we finally almost got it the rest of spain is also easing the measures in catalonia in madrid and andalusia murcia north spain so slowly but surely we're getting to that point where we will not be talking much of the, of the virus of the situation again we will just be talking about all the good and positive news that are happening in our region and about the recovery that our country is making in general the next news that i wanted to let you know is we've had uh, quite a few manifestations here and protests going on especially in barcelona uh, because of the airports so we have a major problem with Barcelona airport um, the local authorities they needed to expand desperately Barcelona's airport which is called El Prat why because the amount of passengers is increasing each year and if they will not expand themselves they uh, will not have enough space to provide it to all the passengers coming uh, to that airport uh, approximately like in eight years more or less they've said so by 2029 maximum and they had to uh, start the works already now because it takes a long time to build another part of the airport you know they were waiting for the commission to approve it and for the money for the help to arrive but then uh, something happened the lands that are near the what is that noise do you hear it okay it stopped now i was wondering what that noise was it was kind of a huge machine like passing by but there's literally no one just people walking around and the sea so like that was very strange no maybe some kind of works going on but it's like it sounds from everywhere like there's so such an echo in between the buildings that it sounds there 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 like in all the parts here so you don't really know where it's coming from well i hope they will stop soon so the problem was that all the lands they are like national reserves so you cannot really touch them uh, this was not known up until like uh, a few months ago this is why they were denied in the permission to construct some more areas and some more like roads for the airplanes and etc 
uh, and all this money that they needed it went to Madrid's airport Madrid El Barajas uh, in order for them to construct some more and improve all the installations, all the areas for passengers to make sure that the quality is the best and also to make sure that they will be able to accept so many passengers that are increasing and are thought to keep increasing during the next few years. So by 2030, Madrid's airport has to be bigger nicer because it will receive more than 400 million euros for it that's only just the first part and barcelona's airport well they are left with nothing at all this is why they were making some protests but i mean it is what it is if there's a national land uh, like natural parks natural reserves uh you cannot really do much about it because the, even if you have a lot of money and you want to buy the permission to construct it's not going to be the case because that land is looked like with a microscope you know it's impossible to do anything that would not cause problems afterwards also the important thing what they say is that the airports here in spain in general all of them they wanted to increase the tax uh, like the airport tax which is called tasa del aeropuerto uh, basically, this is what the airline companies pay in order to be able to fly to these airports and like stay in these airports, have their planes in there, the staff and etc. Like operate from these airports. Uh, so they, um, the AENA, which is like airline company, major airline company, not in terms of flights, but in terms of um, managing all the airline companies and airports in Spain, they've decided that they wanted to... Um, put that tax slightly higher because they wanted the airports to recover faster to be able to get more money and recover uh, because there have been some tough times for them as well well as for anyone basically uh, but the commission has said that no there's a new law that says that they are not able to modify the taxes and increase the taxes up until 2026 so like five more years they were in shock they've said that well how will we operate we need to recover the money but i think that's actually a good thing to do that's fair to say that taxes need to be frozen up until 2026 because like these companies won't suffer anymore they won't need to pay more money uh, the tickets will not increase in prices either because these taxes they affect airline tickets price as well the higher the taxes will be the more people will pay for the airline ticket so that's good for that it's not it's only not good for this company that works manages like all the airports but fairly thinking um it's good for us because we don't pay as much and it's good for airline companies because they don't have extra money right now to spend on taxes only because this management company thinks it's a good time to get some more income so this is basically what's going on with the airports also wanted to say that a uh, very interesting thing those of you who love vodafone um like company here in spain they've announced that they will be closing all their personal shops like all the shops of vodafone that are theirs as it is that they are the owners of will be closed in the entire spain i remember the first time when i've seen a vodafone shop this was in ireland in cork uh, I went there when I was like, uh, I think I was 12 years more or less with my dad. He was working at the construction in Ireland. He um, went there to work and get some extra income for my family. Uh, so that was the first time that I visited Ireland. Um, and this, when we went there to like biggest streets of the town, I that was the first time that I've seen Vodafone company because my dad actually went there to purchase a SIM card and a phone. Um, so like... It, it impacted like the amount of phones that they had there, like, you know, the old brands already, but back then they were brand new things, uh, like first smartphones, etc. And uh, I remember that since then I've seen more and more of these, of these shops emerging in my country and in Germany and here and now in Spain when I moved. And they were like on every corner, but right now it's not gonna be the case. They've said that they will be closing in total uh approximately 34 shops of their like private shops okay it does not mean that like uh, other shops that work with them will not be able to sell their products they will but private shops 
No, we will not see any of them very, very shortly. Until the end of this year, they need to close all of them down because they want to reduce the staff that they have. Um, they say that for them it's also been hard because people are not purchasing so many mobile phones or not contracting so many like new contracts. But it's normal because Vodafone here in Spain, it's one of the most expensive companies, but they do not provide the best service here. This is why a lot of people are looking for a cheaper option for better service, better conditions, and they are just leaving Vodafone behind. They just stayed behind. They are not able to go with the rhythm, with the changes that are producing right now here in Spain. So um, they just cannot uh, allow themselves to have as many shops anymore. Uh, as by their own words, they say that the digital era is here already and they do not need as many shops because everything is done online. Uh, which might be true at some point, but the other truth is that the shops that I've seen here in Albir, in Benidorm, Albir shops, by the way, disappeared already. And in Benidorm, I think they also have disappeared almost. Um, no one goes in there. While in other shops like Movistar, Dragonet, uh, Orange, like in all others, there are people, like there are queues of people waiting. Vodafone is always empty and has been empty for a while already, for a few years, which is why they've taken that decision. They will reduce the staff by 237 people as for now, maybe even more slightly later on, uh, but they will make a compensation, which is 33 days, like slightly more than a month for each year worked. Well, we'll see what will be happening, but, um, I mean, it's not fair for the people who are working there, but if they will get a quite a good payment for it, um, then why not? They will be able to find a better job because um, sooner than later, this should have happened with Vodafone. So that you know, if you're coming here, if you need some Vodafone service, so that you know it's not available in um, like exclusive Vodafone shops, don't search for them, you won't find them. You will need to go to a distributor of a lot of um, like mobile sales companies and there you might contract their service but not in their personal shop anymore and the last news very quickly want to say to you that uh, this week those of you who will be coming in october first and second of october at the end of this week we have a very nice event especially for those who are interested in fashion uh, we have alicante fashion week yes it's not only new york not only like uh, in the biggest cities here in alicante we also have a fashion week that will be the sixth edition actually this year and um not only people will be able to be present at the fashion week fashion show as it is uh both of these days but you will also have a live streaming from them just click online Alicante Fashion Week 21, which is this year, 2021, uh, streaming, and you will be able to get to their website and watch the streaming online to actually get to know what actually the fashion is here in Spain, how people used to wear, what kind of proposals do we have here in Spain, and what people are thinking is modern and stylish this year, 2021, for autumn, winter collection. I personally, myself, I'm very curious. I've not seen, I do not know a lot of designers here in Alicante, uh, like smaller designers, emerging ones. So it will be interesting to see what their sense of fashion is in here and what they actually propose to us. So I myself will be checking that one on the 1st or 2nd of October. Those of you who wanted to know what's happening with La Palma Island on, on Canary Islands, the volcano was kind of stable. Uh, people were saying that, well, okay, there's not much more lava coming out. That will be fine. But then yesterday, the new like mouth opened up, the new point opened up, and it's not like this dark lava that is flowing very, very slow. Uh, it, this is they, They're called Hawaiian, okay, because this is the type of lava that is very, very light, uh, and it's just, it's very fluid, you know, it's very, very liquid, not the same as the other one. And it's just flowing from the other side. Um, people are still evacuated, still a lot of houses are destroyed. So it's difficult, catastrophic situation in La Palma Island. Um, we are just waiting on see what will be happening. And once, um, even the people who are not affected by lava, they are evacuated, those uh, of them who live by the seashore, 
because they were waiting for the lava to get to the sea and then due to the salt and minerals and the lava like when it comes together there are a lot of toxic fumes and gases um, brought up to the air and it's toxic for people's health it's quite dangerous so this is why people who live there they are evacuated those of the, those who don't want to do that they are asked to stay at home to close all the windows and to wear the masks just in case and what about the Spanish weather? I'm in the shade right now because I have an umbrella right here, right in front of me. So I was managed to get into the shade, but the sun is shining. You can see behind me, it's blue, blue sky with no clouds at all today. There are some people walking down the beach, not many of them just doing some sports or lying down right there. People are slowly coming, but it's early in the morning. By midday, there will be a lot more of them right here and even some tourists as well. Wanted to say that today, as you can see on this map, let's put it right here, uh, there'll only be some rain and clouds on the north parts of Spain and on Balearic Islands. The rest of the country will be sunny and nice weather as the one that we have in here today. Although it's true, that by uh, tomorrow and Friday we might have some more clouds in here uh, clouds will come to our Mediterranean area the experts even say meteorologists I mean even say that it might be raining but it's not gonna be a heavy rain pouring rain and it might even not affect Benidorm area as it is we will see tomorrow hopefully it won't be raining because we just love the temperature that we have right now it's ideal weather to spend the maximum of time outside on the open air what about the temperatures these are the temperatures for today and as you can see they are approximately the same as we've had during the previous days and on monday they are quite stable on the north part we'll have today between 17 and 25 degrees in the center between 17 and 24 same temperature in the south part between 24 and 33 slightly warmer uh, because it's south part and in mediterranean area between 26 and 30 degrees also very very nice temperatures in alicante today it's going to be 28 the same here in our lovely sunny benidorm in barcelona 25 in granada 33 malaga 28 sevilla 32 Madrid 24, Murcia 31, Balearic Islands 28 and Canarian between 25 to 27. Valencia has slightly less because it's towards the north part and it's going to be 26 degrees in there. The water temperature today, by the way, will be 24.2 degrees. Still very nice, still quite warm enough to be able to have a swim on our Mediterranean beach right here. I hope you enjoyed watching today's video. If you did, don't forget to click a like. Make sure you activate the notifications bell to receive all the notifications about the latest videos published here on the channel and subscribe if you still did not do so. I wish you a lovely day of today and we will see each other tomorrow in a new interesting video from Benidorm Center. Bye everyone!